And I do hope that you get a chance to stay for our next guest because he, he's a Norwegian Brazilian kite surfer. Uh huh. There we go. All right. So, have you ever been to Cape Hatteras? Uh, I don't know if he has. Okay. Uh, it's it's on my list. So so you know if if or someone, Mauritius. Uh, well, he's he's traveling frequently to Mauritius and he calls it work. So I lived uh, in Mauritius for many years. I have to admit, I have actually uh, turned to wing foiling now. That's the new uh, fun thing to do. So. Uh, I'm actually uh, a new beginner again. I'm learning. Um, but yeah, I, I do kite surf as well. Nice to meet you, Tony. So, to Tony, if you ever need a guest speaker that has this, you know, he has the corporate innovator background and he has the startup innovator background and he has the global venture capital uh, background and he is currently operating a global accelerator program. If you ever want to fly him over, uh, you know, maybe for a basketball game and a guest lecture, that's the man, right? <laughs> Deal. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So everyone, um, allow me to introduce our, our next speaker. Um, it, it really started with a cold call several years ago where I, in the very early days of the scale-up simulation, I cold called the catapult ocean accelerator manager. And I tried to explain what is a scale-up simulation. Now, she was very nice and very polite, and she didn't say no, but it was clearly she didn't say yes either. Um, now, thanks to this global community, um, Roberto informed me that there's a couple of Costa Ricans in Oslo, and you should meet them. And so I did. And it turned out, being a very, very small world, that the Costa Ricans from San Jose, Costa Rica, had traveled to Norway for the three-month catapult ocean accelerator and it just so happened that they were in Norway on exactly the same day as we were running a strategy simulation discovery session in Oslo. Long story short they joined and within the first 20 minutes they were gobsmacked because they said something to the effect of oh my god tomorrow we have our demo day our pitch day at the catapult accelerator and the stuff that we're doing here we know nothing about. So they, they ran back, and I, I may have you know, encouraged them a little bit, so they ran back to the uh, wonderful people at Catapult and said, hey, we just met Chris and we had this scale-up simulation. We really think that it should be a part of the program. And well, here we are. So over the last couple of years, we've had a really great pleasure to work with the uh, amazing impact accelerator program called Catapult, Catapult Ocean, Catapult Climate, Catapult Africa and many more catapults to come. And as a value added bonus, uh, it is my good friend, fellow kite surfer, uh, Marcus, who's now uh, run, running things at the catapult side. And Marcus has a really cool background. I mean, we first worked together way, way back when he was a corporate innovation dude, trying to get things through the corporate machinery. Uh, and he hosted, you know, events and workshops and keynotes where I got a chance to share some of our early work. And this is many years ago. And then he eventually um, graduated, graduated over to the startup side. He worked extensively on, on setting up a, a VC fund. And now he is in very, very, very good hands with the Catapult program and scaling that globally. So, Marcus, it's always been a pleasure whether we go kite surfing or we go working but I think that you have a fantastic story to share. So welcome and the floor is yours. Thank you so much. So um, first things first, can you see my screen? Is that, is that coming through? Yes. Yes, okay, perfect. Yeah, well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Chris, for that um, lovely introduction. It's been, it's actually been more years than I want to admit um, from back in the days of, of uh, corporate innovation which was uh, you know, a couple of painful years, but also uh, very um, meaningful and learningful. And, um, and so that, that is pretty much my background um, coming from the, I would say the dark side to the light, <laughs> because uh, it's, there's many aspects to that, um, you know, going from an oil and gas company, which I, uh, I worked for at least three, four years, um, oil and gas to impact. Um, many ways I was sort of from the dark side to the light and um, going from, you know, a very top down hierarchical, um, really disengaging work environment to actually doing startups and doing 
venture capital, which is uh, all uh, but boring, I would say, uh, and where you really get to, um, yeah, put things into life. So, um, so thank you so much for hosting me, and um, and uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here with you to share some stuff. And I wanted to start with a, a pop quiz. Maybe we can do this in the chat. Um, you know, who here has been involved with a accelerator program or anything to do with the uh, acceleration uh, maybe just type yes if you have so there is a couple Enrique you, you don't count <laughs> um, outside count <laughs> <laughs> near as well okay so there's a couple okay that's good uh because it gives me an idea about uh how much to share um and I really wanted to to, to Maybe just share some some stuff about um, you know what well, what we try to do and why we do these things. And so, uh, quick agenda: uh, I'm going to talk about uh, catapult, um, the impact investing, the space of impact investing. I think it's very misunderstood. Uh, our big idea: why we accelerate? Uh, you know, how do we also these these tools that we we've been developing together with Chris? Um, what that is meant for us, and uh, what can we take away from that? Uh, maybe some learnings from COVID-19 and thank you. And um, please just really, if you want to ask questions, you, you're, um, you're um, welcome to do so and interrupt me and we have 30 minutes. So that's um, basically um, what we have today. So very quickly about Catapult, um, our, our mission um, is to build a thriving world for all. And basically um, we, we, we exist to mobilize uh, technology, capital and people uh mobilize that for for impact for good basically and so this is our uh story up until now and i think uh chris was there very early on just uh uh ocean was set up in 2019 2018 and 2019 i was there since the very beginning uh i was actually hired in um uh, the third uh, the first hire and i ran their um um uh, uh, operations in, in Denmark and Copenhagen uh, with the Danish bank. And I, I, I later came in full time um, to really uh, help us scale because we also like our portfolio companies really want to, uh, are, are, are getting to scale. But um, basically there's a, there's a couple of arms here. There's a, we have these um, uh, investment sort of platforms, uh, Accelerator, Ocean, Climate, Africa, and then we have a foundation and then we have uh, uh, the Future Fest. Um, and this is how it all fits together. Basically, Catapult Foundation, we share the gospel, uh, teach others how to uh, do impact investing, why it matters and why you should uh, care. And we do this in collaboration with the B&W Foundation and um, the uh, uh, in, uh, University of Zurich, uh, their pr uh, private wealth uh, and um, capital um, uh, division. And uh, we have, uh, like we say, our rebellion needs, a, re needs rebels. And this is why we do the something called the Catapult Future Fest. This is basically the, um, <laughs> I'll call it the, um, um, uh, the burning man of the Nordics, <laughs> basically. But it's uh, it's it's yeah quirky because the, these impact investors they're not like any other investor uh, usually usually that's the case um, and so we have this event in Oslo every year and where we try to rally people and then uh, we put our money where our mouth is through these platforms uh, climate ocean and Africa and and we do um, these are completely normal uh, funds um, there's nothing really um, special about them but the, the the i would say the uh specific focus that we have is um the all the companies that we invest in there needs to be uh impact intentionality and so that leads to the question what is impact investing uh but before we can talk about that we should probably talk about what what is impact so because um there's a number of uh there's <laughs> there's a I would say there's probably lots of serious people that um, claim that Netflix is a uh, impact invest uh, or, or Netflix can be an impact investing or, or um, investable company. Um, and, and so um, 
and we don't believe so. We we believe for there to be impact, uh, there needs to be um, something that benefits uh, what we say uh, um, people or planet, basically. And impact investing, if you look at the definition, it's very boring, but it's generating positive, measurable social and environmental impact alongside financial returns. Um, and um, if you look at the spectrum, we sort of sit in the top right. And um, you would have traditional is sort of in, indifferent. Uh, they're trying to maximize financial returns. And then you have uh, responsible, uh, where you, this is sort of where ESG comes in. And there's a lot of, you know, uh, talk about that um, uh, because it's, it's really not, <laughs> I mean, ESG is just really avoiding harm. Uh, where sustainable is sort of benefiting all stakeholders and impact investing, that's what we say contributing to solutions. Um, and so our big idea in the catapult is, um, in fact, you know, solving the world's biggest problems will also be the biggest business opportunities. And now, at the time when we said this, this was back in 2016, um, at, at least in Norway and the Nordics, I would say this was sort of, I mean, nobody really be truly believed this. <laughs> so, um, and so we actually had to, you know, we, it was very hard actually starting up. And I would say it still is a, um, a matter of controversy that you can do good and do well, as they say. So actually investing, but we see this more and more. And, and not only now with, um, with um, wealthy individuals, um, high, high net worths and, and family offices, we also see you know, everyday people um, wanting to, you know, contacting, contacting their bank, wanting to invest some money where they know there's at least some decent return, um, but also um, where they, can, they know the money is going to solve some problems. So, um, and so we truly believe this is a smart thing to do. And, and luckily now the last couple of years, we've been able to see some evidence that this uh, thesis uh, pans out is correct. So we've had two recent unicorn companies. We have two more on the way. Um, and this is obviously the holy grail for any, any investor, uh, whether impact or not. Uh, any VC will, will try to get these so-called unicorns um, which is a company with a valuation over a billion dollars. And, um, and so the, I think these were fund or batched three of catapults. Um, so they were not the first ones, uh, but this is a credit scoring um, uh, FinTech sort of um, uh, startup. Basically what they do is um, they, they allow people who don't have or can afford um, housing or can afford property, give them the same opportunities with credit scoring based on how well they pay their rent, basically. So uh, this one has probably been our, our best um, um, best company as of yet with a 240 multiple. Um, and then we have Betterfly, which is a um, platform that it's, it's sort of one of those exercise apps um, platforms, but it's it's connected with corporations and they give uh, they they sort of reward healthy habits, exercise, med uh, meditation, mindfulness, stuff like that, with char charitable donations and no cost life insurance coverage. And it also went really well, 60x, and um, is a is a sort of social um, benefit um, impact investing. Uh, more cases, uh, we have our ocean sort of vertical is, is really heavily looking into how we can use seaweed in all, uh, in all um, for, for, to benefit people, businesses, and, and society and, and the environment. Um, so ocean rainforest actually grows seaweed. And um, the thing with seaweed, no one really gets how that's a super... Um, sort of a super crop. Um, it doesn't need any fertilizers. It can grow anywhere. Um, you can um, you can use it to to sequester carbon. Uh, you could extract proteins uh, from it. Um, you can put it into food. Um, yeah, it's it's really really great. And and so looking at uh, we're investing in the whole um, 
sort of value chain of, of seaweed. Uh, Hyperion, which is using 3D printing to 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 make um, to, so that you use less um, concrete because concrete is really really bad for the climate. Obviously, um, I think something like 20% of all CO2 emissions is coming from cement in some way or fashion, or the infrastructure. Africa, we have a company called Crop to Cash, which uh, banks the unbanked there as well and gives smallholder farmers who also doesn't have any credit history, um, give them uh, access to loans, credits, and accounts, and uh, you know, basic financial um, services, basically, and, and um, using a feature phone, not a smartphone, because they don't have smartphones in Africa. So, um, and then they also get access to agri inputs and tools. And, and uh, so, yeah, pretty, pretty large portfolio um, after all these years, 140 investments. And this is just the impact in, in the oceans. Um, more examples of companies, we're looking at electric propulsion systems. We're looking to tackle sort of the plastic with um, the plastic problems in the oceans. Um, a lot of the, um, a lot of the when you when you dust down a, a ship and be paint a ship a lot of that that's just pure plastic you know being transferred into the oceans when you do that so that so this company um um uh, pinovo is doing a zero pollution back and blasting solution which is better than conventional um solutions which is also what we sort of look for in these kinds of solutions we want to not only be impactful we want to beat the competition in conventional conventional um systems um so uh, and be better basically like tesla is thinking like we we don't want to just uh, introduce an electric car we want to have an electric car that just you know um decimates all uh, of the ice vehicles um the petrol um cars um in 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 speed and comfort in everything so that's what we're looking for these these types of companies that really take this stuff really seriously and makes impact sort of the one of the main pillars of their competitive advantage. Um, so, so that's sort of our history coming up to now. Um, we started as a generic accelerator, then we, um, then we introduced Ocean, which became probably our most successful sort of vertical. This is where Chris came in. We had a fantastic collaboration with Chris, um, and we're now using that same templates to deliver our program to all of our verticals and the key learnings for us at least was that focused thematic verticals are more effective and more attractive for all parties and that uh, investors want more specific impact mandates and startups want more tailored programs um, so now we sort of we're sort of looking across climate ocean and land and land in africa basically because we have a you know huge um, belief that Africa will become uh, not just where we can do the most impact, but it will also uh, where we can see the, the you know, significant economic um, growth. Um, so the, 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 the thought with these acceleration programs, um, you know, if you take a step back, so you have all these companies and we have 140. So the thought with an acceleration program is, and asking the question is like, how can we 10x these companies in terms of growth, impact, and learning. Well, that's that's basically why they 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 sort of made up uh, or or the concept of the acceleration programs began. There was a lot of research on acceleration programs. Um, it's actually very early still. Like if you look at the big scheme of things, um, we're, we're humanity is just figuring out this stuff, and and um, you know you you see a number of of uh, hybrids or, or, or other types of these programs right now. But typically, the, the main difference between an accelerator and an incubator, which you've probably heard of before, is that it's, 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 it's much more fast paced. Uh, it's much, much more focused. Um, it tends to be uh, when once there is something tangible, like there's an idea that's been sort of crafted, uh, or there is some kind of evidence of, of product market fit. Um, it's it's when it gets interesting because you know these acceleration programs they they feed they need a ecosystem behind them, so mentors, people involved, investors. So if it's only ideas and all if it's all fluffy, then um, 
typically that's when you find it in its in incubation space. So um, yeah, there's like a million of these acceleration programs right now. There's probably more acceleration programs, or the joke is, at least in the Nordics, there's more um, more programs than startups. <laughs> this is probably not the case in the US or uh, larger sort of European ecosystem, but it is getting ridiculous now with all these um, programs, what they offer. And most of them actually don't really do that well, to be honest, and I'm not saying that, that we are the best, actually, I can say that because we've won awards saying we're one of the best. But um, I think uh, there's a lot of people who use this for the wrong reasons. Corporates use it to attract, you know, build their own um, branding. Um, some startups or some, uh, sorry, some investors use it to really just uh, have something fun to do. Um, but there is a couple who's who's been extremely um, successful in this space, and if you if you really build these programs in a certain way, the upside is incredible. And and the what we call the deal flow, the the, the amount of really really attractive companies that you're able to get in contact with increases if you are able to get to to, to you know the top level of these sort of programs. So what you put into the program is really, really important. Um, and like I said, there's been, you know, there's spin-offs and there's new type of, you know, venture studios, startup programs, venture builders, venture sprint labs, startup launch pads. There's all kinds of variants where they mix early stage entrepreneurship with money and uh, money and people and knowledge and different structures. So. Um, it's 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 quite um, it's quite daunting. We've I, I I would say this is our program. This is this is the three month program that we offer for catapults, and um, I guess this is a culmination of of being around for four or five years. We we started with the, the basic sort of three month, you know, focusing heavily on growth, 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 and growth hacking and getting to sales and business execution and business development. Whereas that was the focus before, we found that that is less needed now. Um, I wouldn't say we don't focus on, on it at all. We definitely do. We, 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 we have a lot of focus on sales and business development, but um, I think for us to be quite unique, our focus should be on impact management and investor readiness. That's, that's the two main pillars where we really see we are, you know, we're, we're bringing something to the founders where they go and the, there's a wow factor after they've been through the program. They really, really see that that is something they were, I wouldn't say clueless in, but they definitely didn't come into it thinking that that was something that they mastered uh, in all aspects. And, and, and um, I, th I think, um, yeah, I think that's that's where um, I think we 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 get the good feedback that we do, um, and um, and we sort of now at this stage I would say have a, a world leading impact, if not the world leading impact investment uh, or acceleration program, and um, it's it's sort of we um, we divide it up into four sprints. Um, we. Uh, we also have these forums and, and these are all modules. And, and so you could say that these are either online or offline modules. Um, uh, going back to what Tony just discussed about, you know, being open and being transparent and being vulnerable is actually um, for founders. It's a very, very rare thing. Mostly founders are extremely competitive. So what we actually focus on in some of these sessions, what we call CEO forums is actually for them to open up and, actually share the pains because startups are is running a startup is basically like it's it's 100 suffering from from day one it's like it's a lot of hard work uh, everyone's giving you grief everyone's uh, you know you have to go through a hundred meetings for one yes so it's like uphill 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 um, and so to be able to access a uh, a group of people who's going through the same struggles, is extremely rare for these people, more rare than you would believe. So we actually do tend to have some of these sessions where 
we just let them talk to each other like uh, human to human about you know what's difficult how did you solve that stuff uh, what can we learn from other ceos and that's what we do in these ceo forums is actually bring in former ceos not ceos of like big conglomerates that doesn't really uh, resonate with startup founders so it's ceos of of successful startups i would say and not focusing necessarily on the wins because they see that everywhere it's on tech uh, tech crunch uh, all these forums, they only talk about what really what worked, whereas we want to really talk about what, 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 what fucked up, what, what did you really struggle with and what was hard and how did you combat that? Um, I would say also um, to, to go back, going back to strategy tools, I think, um, I didn't, I don't think we really anticipated how, how that would I mean, investor readiness or, or investor, their investor focus, um, obviously we thought it was gonna be relevant, but um, it's been striking to us um, through working with Chris and Enrico and, um, and Nir, how these startup founders really fumble with this stuff. I mean, it's, it's, really, it's really striking to see and, and uh, having them go through all these um, exercises um, it really highlights where they're extremely weak uh, in, in terms of their understanding about how to work together with investors and how to how to create a compelling sort of value proposition, um, and um, and uh, to see you know sort of the the revelations that comes from these exercises that we do. And there's a lot of work. I mean, I mean, <laughs> it's almost like I feel sorry for some of the. Uh, these startups to go through this program because um, it is relentless. I mean, it's it's um, it it is so much work. And there's twelve. Uh, we have twelve exercises where they they have to hand in stuff week. Like I think they have two hand ins every single week for four weeks straight. And those are not small hand ins. I mean, it's it's a, a lot of work. So um, we always try to prepare them. Uh, emotionally before uh, we actually, uh, you know, embark on, on this section of the program. But um, it's been really, really great. And uh, probably this one uh, has been one of the top um, praised parts of the program. We're not trying to do the same with impact. So we're, we're really trying to, you know, nail the impact and the investor readiness and then all this other stuff. Um, and, and combine that into a world leading program. So this is how it looks like. Uh, basically there's tons and tons of these modules. I think I counted 95 on the last one and we're not even done. So lots of sessions, lots of learnings, lots of sharing, lots of insights, lots of work uh, and it's offline and, and online. And I think that's probably one of the most interesting takeaways from COVID-19 is how much of this stuff we can actually make available um, in, in a digital format. Uh, we just recently came back from Mauritius to do a um, physical launch. So, so going back to, actually going back to, can I, can I do this? Uh, going back to the, to this one, we figured maybe we'll do sprint one as a physical, um, physical part of the program because we were sort of coming back from COVID-19 where everything was digital. Um, maybe we can do the, a hybrid, meaning maybe we'll do two weeks. So we did two weeks and this was our first time ever being, being back and we had sharing sessions and people were there. It was, uh, it was incredible to be back. Um, and so reflecting on COVID-19, um, what we didn't expect was probably the fact that um, we've never been rated higher because we, we measure a lot. Like we measure everything we do in all parts of the program. And the, the learning that came back is that we have never received as good feedback on the program as we did during COVID-19. So it means founders found it more convenient. They didn't have to travel. They didn't have to go because we, we forced them to come to Oslo from all corners of the world for three months. Uh, we saved costs, they saved costs. Uh, it was just a better experience. Um, and so, um, so now we're thinking like, okay, so how do we continue to deliver the world's best impact acceleration program? And it's probably gonna be 
you know, a hybrid um, going forward, but I'm still leaning towards like digital is the best way of delivering this stuff and not making people, because you're taking a lot of time away from founders and you're taking them away from their customers when you ask them to join a program three months somewhere else in the world. Uh, but, um, you know, we, we, we've been lucky to have some exceptional people and, and partners and, 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 and co-creating this program with us. Um, there's a lot of mentors involved and a, a lot of people coming from all over the world um, to, to do this. Um, and then we also uh, come to the realization that, again, going back to my previous point, um, we're using more and more of our startup startups actually um, alumni, people who's gone through the program because they sit on the most up-to-date and relevant knowledge and how to. So we're actually now more and more going back to our own portfolio companies, asking them to develop modules, learning modules, sharing modules, exchanges, et cetera, et cetera, because they, um, they, they know the most. So it's a combination between those two factors, I think. So, um, with that, I think uh, I'm out of time. Uh, we have some time left for, um, I think I'm, I'm running at 27 minutes now. So Enrico, uh, maybe we can do like, I don't know, maybe some, some knowledge exchange or discussions or questions. I'm open for most things, but that was sort of uh, our catapult sort of journey in a nutshell and uh, what we learned from these programs. So hopefully that was useful. Marcus, thank you very much. Now, I noticed that you didn't invite anyone to join you in Mauritius. Was that, was that on purpose? <laughs> what are you talking about? I invited everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I invited I think... everyone. Someone didn't, uh, didn't have the time to come. No, I'm kidding. But uh, actually, we were actually quite lucky with, um, we had a lot of people there. We, had, I, I, we flew in 15 people. It's not hard actually getting people to join in Mauritius, I found. Um, um because i mean yeah it, it's just a really nice place to be obviously that's not why we're in mauritius i think um maybe i should have been more clear on that as well it sounds like we're going to sort of a tropical paradise but we actually see um you know uh there's a couple of things with mauritius that's really really interesting first of all mauritius is the most stable government in africa it's the, it's the only welfare state in africa uh every uh every one who has a company and that's worth something uh, significant will establish themselves in Mauritius. So it's a financial hub. It's to Africa, which Singapore is to, uh, the, the, to Asia, basically. And um, it also has a, uh, the, the government has a really, really um, passion for impact. And they want to not only uh, look at how do we um, create the world's food, because we need, we need to, create food in the future we need to feed the world basically and so we you know the only if you look at available space and where it makes sense to do so it's is africa uh because it's it's like uh, uh, i can't remember how many percentage of that um a continent is uh is far farming land but it's 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 a minute sort of figure and um so it makes sense to for us to um grow our food there but we need to do that in a more sustainable way. So they're committed to what we call regenerative agriculture, which is basically not using the pesticides and the fertilizers that we're doing today because it's really not a circular um, uh, model. And it's also um, creating havoc for our oceans. So yeah, we're super passionate about Africa basically. So next time uh, when we do stuff in Mauritius, then uh, I'd love to have, uh, uh, a lot, a lot of you there um, to help our startups. Anyways, that was a long um, <laughs> tangent. Sorry about so, that. So, so, so the answer was yes. No, but yes, Marcus, yes. Mar 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 Marcus, let me uh, let me let me say the following. So, first of all, we really appreciate the collaboration, and you know, a lot of the things, and I think this is important for for everyone here. Uh, a lot of the things that we've been doing with Catapult has not been. I mean, we had no template to work from. So there's been a lot of experimenting. There's been a lot of learning. There's been a lot of testing. Some of it works. Some of it we need to adjust. Uh, the stuff with SPACs, we're not going to clean out again because that went out of fashion last year. Um, but but it, I really, really appreciate the, the collaboration. And then, Marcus, if, if my memory serves me correctly, we are going to be doing three programs together this year. 
So we had a spring, we have two in the fall, and we also have, may have may or may not have some fund manager work in between. I think <laughs> it's becoming a problem because uh, at some point we need to figure out how how do we scale uh, how do we scale this. So say that we have like three programs uh, every six months, six programs a year. So yeah, I think uh, we're we're gonna we need to figure it out because uh, you know these things uh, tend to overlap. But it's uh, it's been great, and um, we're looking forward to you know the future um, and future programs, uh, and and really helping. And this is the main point: helping the next generation impact entrepreneurs, uh, make sense of the fundraise um, and uh, yeah the fundraise process, and really help them succeed uh, to do more impact. That's the whole point.